I am reminded of what I read in St. Faustina's diary. She saw her soul as God saw her soul. Welcome back, everybody. Today is Friday of the first week of Lent, and we are on the meditation number 103 about the examination of conscience by Father Gabriel from Divine Intimacy. It's so good to see you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate your smiley face over on that side. So we will t- continue on. Janelle's going to start off today. Sure. Again, a little prayer just to get started. He says, O oh Lord, cast a ray of light on my soul so that I may be able to see myself as you see me and as you judge me. I just think that's so important, you know, to because often we see ourselves through different lenses, right? But we want to see ourselves with the eyes of Christ. And that's how we want to look upon our children and upon our co-workers and upon our parents and upon our spouses. Look at them with the eyes of Christ. Interesting. Uh, we don't talk about what we're going to say before we turn on the camera. So I don't know what Janelle's going to, what quote she's going to pull, but that was the quote that stood up for me as well at the very beginning. <laughs> Uh, and when you're, you're speaking, you know, seeing ourselves through the lens that God sees us with. But we often see our, maybe I'll speak for myself. Have you ever seen yourself as the hero of your own story? <laughs> I think maybe men maybe struggle more with this than others. Uh, but, you know, Jesus is the hero of every story. He's the Savior. He's the Redeemer. And when we, I think when we start seeing ourselves through the lens of God, I think two things happen. One is that we see that sin is really terrible and that we also see, number two, that God's love is immeasurable. I think that's what happens. Sin is terrible. God's love is immeasurable. And I am reminded of what I read in St. Faustina's diary that I'd like to share with you because I think it's applicable. She saw her soul as God saw her soul. Suddenly, I saw the complete condition of my soul as God sees it. I could clearly see all that is displeasing to God. I did not know that even the smallest transgressions will have to be accounted for. What a moment! Who can describe it? To stand before the thrice holy God, Jesus asked me, Who are you? I answered, I am your servant, Lord. You are guilty of one day of fire in purgatory. I wanted to throw myself immediately into the flames of purgatory, but Jesus stopped me and said, Which do you prefer, suffer now for one day in purgatory or for a short while on earth? I replied, Jesus, I want to suffer in purgatory, and I want to suffer also the greatest pains on earth, even if it were until the end of the world. That was a really good answer, actually. Yeah. To because I would have been like, I just I'll go back to Earth and do my suffering for a little while on Earth. Oh yeah. Because I've heard some pretty na- nasty things about purgatory. <laughs> 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 so even like one day can seem like an eternity. I think for well, some. Well, it's just how generous she wants to do reparation for sin. Yes. Like she wants exactly. to go to purgatory, but she also wants to suffer the the human suffering that's possible, the worst kind on Earth, even mm-hmm. if it was until the end of time. Hmm. And, you know, two, two days ago, we talked about unintentional venial sin. Well, St. Faustina, I think, brings our attention to this. Even the smallest little faults will have to be given account to. Well, we can start giving account to those by doing reparation for sin now. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, okay, so we see that sin is really, really terrible when we look at ourselves with the lens of God. But I also think that we also see ourselves as immeasurably loved. That you are to die for. That God loves you as though you're the only person in the entire world. That he he acts as though he can't live without you. He gives his best for you in his son, Jesus Christ. He withholds nothing. He could have redeemed us by the scraps that were left over from the creation of this universe. God can do anything. He could have redeemed us in a different way, maybe by just, I don't know, saying the word, you are redeemed, or just shedding a little bit of blood, maybe just by skinning his knee or something, or getting stoned and he's got a little bruise. But Jesus didn't do that. And in fact, we read from St. Alphonsus that even one drop of blood would have been enough to redeem all of humanity. But he doesn't give one drop. His love is in excess. God loves you in excess. All of this was done to show 
how valuable we are in his eyes. And we need to know both. We need to know the horror of sin, and we need to know how much we are loved. Um, This is the correct balance. We can never attain sanctity if we have not looked for an efficacious means of acquiring it. In other words, the examination of conscience attains its end when the soul who has faithfully practiced this exercise can say to itself, These are the inclinations which I must watch more carefully to avoid falling into sin. So I was just thinking about this. Um, There's a couple points that I would like to make. One is we can't attain sanctity if we don't have a plan. And I remember um, when we were doing the consecration uh, 33 days to morning glory, Father Michael Gately had quoted um, St. Maximilian Colby, and he talked about uh, what was it like having a plan for your sanctity or something like I that? And it was that like was your goal, wonderful. your your holiness goal or something like that. And you know we have goals for all kinds of things in life, but do we actually have a goal or a means, step by step, of how we're going to attain holiness? I mean, obviously we need the grace of God, right? But also, what are we going to do in order to achieve that? And so that was one one thing that stood out to me. And the other thing was knowing our frailties. And I remember watching a video by Father Ripperger, and he talked about asking Our Lady of Sorrows to reveal to you your defects, you know, those areas in our life that, you know, we really need to work on and our weaknesses. Because once we know what our defects are, then we can work on the opposing virtue, right? We want it, we know the vice, and then we work on the opposing virtue to help um, kind of get rid of those defects. And if you don't want to ask Our Lady of Sorrows Intercession to reveal your defects, just have seven kids. They'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they will be they will be revealed very easily. Yes. You know, the, the um, <laughs> we've joked recently a little bit here about we've had a couple tough days. Yeah. Yeah. And but um, you 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 don't recognize sometimes your weakness unless you're tried. Oh, yeah. And so family life allows for that. And that's supposed to happen. Maybe that happens to you at work. Unless you're tried, you don't see your defects. I, I've said this before, but I thought I was a nice guy until I had kids. And then all of a sudden, I, it's, it's a re- great reveal. Uh, I'm, I'm more selfish than I thought. It's really easy to be patient when there's no one to wait upon. Mm-hmm. It's really generous to, it's easy to be generous when you have no one to give to. And it's really easy to love when you have no one to love, <laughs> like or you think yourself love uh, a really loving person. Um, so maybe you experience this as well. Be, be pay attention to your relationships within your family, particularly because that is where the great reveal happens. And oftentimes, we get blind spots in these relationships, and we think, "Oh, it's always the other person's fault." Um, it's not true. Like some people really have a difficulty recognizing their own faults. They think denial is a river in Egypt. But (laughs) we need to ask Our Lady to reveal, to reveal our blind spots. Um, Thanks for laughing at my joke, by the way. I (laughs) I was thinking, how long have you been waiting to share that one? I don't think I've heard that one before. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I would share it in parish missions. (laughs) Uh, should we stop there friends thank you so much for watching please share with us below what stood out to you and why Um, I always love learning from you and it's Friday today so the rosary of the sorrowful mysteries linked here but also the uh, stations of the cross by St. Alphonsus Mm -hmm. Liguori we provide that for you as well today Mm -hmm. and we will see you on Monday Mm